EBS Engineering and Construction Limited is a leader in innovative, cost-effective, design-build, deep foundation solutions. This video demonstrates the installation of a chance helical pull-down micropile and a chance helical anchor. It will also demonstrate the setup and completion of a compression and tension test on this type of pile and anchor. To begin, a Chance SS200 helical pier which has a 2 inch by 2 inch solid steel square shaft is installed. It will be the compression test pier. The lead section used in this demonstration has a 200 mm, 250 mm and 300 mm helices, 8 inch, 10 inch and 12 inch on the square shaft. The tip of the pier is placed at the designated location marked on the ground. The installation tool, which is attached to the drive head, is placed onto the square shaft. Plumbness is checked in two directions, and the lead section is then advanced into the ground until the top helix is approximately at ground level. The extensions supplied by Chance are all stamped with quality assurance numbers. These numbers indicate the material, the year, the steel supplier, and the heat number and are used to trace materials through the manufacturing process and into the field. Before being installed into the ground, extensions are marked in 300 mm, one foot increments to allow for easier monitoring of torque, as torque values are to be recorded at 300 mm or one foot intervals during installation. The first extension is placed on the lead section and mechanically connected with a bolt. The bolt is tightened and a lead displacement cone is pinned into place approximately 450 millimeters, 18 inches, above the top helix. The displacement cone creates a void around the helical pier shaft as it advances into the ground. Grout is then poured into this void creating a consistent grout column around the shaft of the helical pier. Once again, the installation motor is mounted onto the shaft of the pier and the pier is advanced further. Once the first extension begins to enter the ground, the monitoring and recording of torque values begin. The displacement disc enters the ground creating the void around the shaft. The void is now filled with grout. The level of the grout is maintained as the pier advances to ensure gravity forces the grout down the void. This creates a consistent grout column around the helical pier shaft. The grout level is continuously topped up. Each additional extension is placed onto the shaft of the pier and bolted into place. A centralizer disc is placed onto the extension to keep the shaft of the pier in the center of the grout column as the pier advances. Also, it is used to keep the grout column open to allow for better flow of grout. Once again, the level of grout is maintained. The installation torque is monitored by using a differential pressure gauge. The pressure reading from the DP1 is correlated using a calibration chart and provides the torque applied to the pier measured in kilo newton meters or foot pounds. As the pier advances, the level of grout drops as it is pulled deeper into the ground. As torque on the shaft increases, the shaft will begin to twist. This twist is an indication that the pier is beginning to reach its maximum torque limit. It is designed to do this. Torque is applied to the pier until it reaches the maximum design torque capacity as determined by the manufacturer. The torque readings are recorded and once the installation is complete, they provide a summary of the installation of that pier. The top of the pier shaft is cut flat at the appropriate elevation for the test bracket to be placed. The test bracket must bear directly on the solid steel square shaft. The plate is leveled to ensure safe and accurate testing. Next, the reaction anchors need to be laid out. The reaction anchors resist the vertical loads created when the compression test is being completed on the test pier. The size and configuration of the reaction beams are taken into consideration during this step. The location of the reaction anchors are measured and marked on the ground. 
The anchors will then be installed followed by the beams so the compression test can take place. A tension anchor is now being installed. The tension test installation begins in a very similar fashion to the compression test installation. In this demonstration, the tension anchor being installed will also be used as one of the reaction anchors for the compression test. A tension anchor is installed in a very similar fashion to the compression test pier. The first extension is installed and bolted into place. In this demonstration, the test anchor will be installed without using any grout. Again, the torque is recorded and plumbness is checked in two directions. A threaded adapter is bolted to the top of the anchor so the test beam can be attached to the test anchor. A tension test will be demonstrated first. Some wood cribbing is put in place and the beam is placed on the cribbing. The load cylinder is placed on top of the beam. A threaded rod is attached into the adapter previously connected to the test anchor. The nut is tightened on top of the test plate which holds the test cylinder in place. Using a tripod, the deflection monitoring equipment is placed. The dial gauges in this case have a 50 mm 2 inch stroke. Three dial gauges are set up to monitor the average deflection. The cylinder is used to apply the load to the test anchor. Deflection or movement of the pier is monitored and recorded at specific time intervals as determined by the test protocol. Deflections are documented on the test recording sheet. At each load increment, the load is maintained by using the hydraulic jack. Once the test is complete, the load is released from the anchor and final readings are taken. The testing done here generally conforms to the ASTM standard. The amount of deflection can be seen by observing the gap in the plate as the load is removed completely. This is the beginning of a compression test demonstration. After the reaction anchors and the test beam are secured in place, the cylinder is positioned between the underside of the test beam and the top of the test pier. The jack is used to start loading the test pier. It's important to make sure there is good contact between the hydraulic cylinder and the test beam. A small preload is typically placed on the test pier to ensure the apparatus is safely secured into place before carrying out the test. Deflection monitoring equipment, similar to that used in the tension test, is set into place around the test pier. The hydraulic jack is then used to apply the load to the pier. The dial gauge moves as the load is applied. All deflections are recorded on a test sheet. Deflections are measured at the beginning and the end of each load increment. During each load increment, it is important to ensure the load is held at the required load interval. After reaching the maximum applied load, it is released in increments. Measurements are taken and results are recorded on the load test sheet. Testing generally conforms to the ASTM standard for compression tests.